Hello everyone and thank you so much for joining us on this uh, Memorial Day edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service and I'll be hosting today's show. Up uh, first on the breakup map, not a lot of change from uh, you know, what we had yesterday. All the rivers here south of the Brooks Range open uh, all the way from start to finish. And up here in the North Slope, the uh, Colville River has some open areas on quite a stretch of that uh, stream there. And then the Kaparik also has a little bit of uh, open area there at the headwaters, otherwise unknown to ice out toward the coast. And the Sagwart River here has, uh, from the Brooks Range on down to out toward the coast, has some open areas as well, but still ice on all three of those rivers out toward the Arctic coast. And moving on to satellite imagery, we've got uh, front driving eastward here across the Bering Sea, low pressure hanging back out there toward Shimia. Uh, you can see the low center right about in there. And winds uh, pretty gusty out over the western Aleutians. Otherwise, uh, rain and gusty winds associated with the front pushing east and northeast, trying to approach the southwest coast. Clouds and uh, wind on the increase, uh, more of an increase in the clouds and the wind out there. But uh, pretty windy and with uh, rain along the Alaska Peninsula up into the Pribilofs here by 3 p.m. fronts past St. Paul and winds are subsiding and rain becoming a little lighter. Otherwise the interior here, very nice uh, sunshine with uh, developing clouds and showers in some areas, especially here over the uh, Copper River Basin from 40 mile country there southward to the North Gulf Coast and a disturbance keeping it cloudy and rainy over all of the panhandle today, especially here over the uh, southern two-thirds of the uh, area there with uh, looks like showers tapering off back to the north and then uh, fair skies up over the eastern interior areas and generally low clouds with early morning fog that dissipated uh, during the early, or at least by early afternoon across much of the Arctic coastal areas and the Chuck CC pretty cloudy. Rolling that through again, you can see the uh, clouds dissipating initially, then starting to rebuild here on this frame, and already uh, thunderstorms have developed there, at least eight thunderstorms developed there, northwest of Indian Mountain, and also a few strikes here from uh, Northway, around Northway there, in toward the Western Copper River Basin, again up to about two, three in the afternoon today. And uh, rolling that once again, you can see uh, clear skies there over Kodiak Island are mostly clear with uh, another dry day, but uh, the edge of the Sheer Shield just getting onto the southwest coast. That's also spreading across the Bristol Bay area. And on the chart, we've got that 981 millibar low. We have that low out to the west there tagged at 981 millibars. Uh, trough springing uh, south of that, a little tighter gradient on the south side of the low center. So the winds actually came back up out here, gusts 40, 50 miles an hour or as high as 50 miles an hour out toward the western Aleutians with uh, showers. In advance of the front, winds anywhere from 35 to gusts as high as 50 miles an hour. Ahead of that, uh, bringing three quarters of an inch of rain to Falls Pass in the 12 hour period today as uh, the Pribilofs had winds gusting uh, 35 to 40 miles an hour. Ahead of the front there with St. George about four tenths of an inch of uh, precipitation. And uh, those are a couple of the heavier amounts, rain spreading eastward along the Alaska Peninsula with uh, cold bay getting gusts, 40 mile an hour wind gusts there as well today. And winds starting to come up along the southwest coast, isolated showers up here in the northwest <clears throat> and that thunderstorm developing northwest of Indian Mountain. That'll probably come a little more widespread up there before it begins to taper off this evening. And maybe an isolated shower up over the eastern Burks Range. Looks like a pretty good bet before uh, before the end of the afternoon here today. And again, these thunderstorms will probably continue to expand a little bit here over the Copper River Basin, possibly getting the Talkeetna, Chugach Mountains, and uh, just a risk for the Kenai Peninsula. Showers eastern North Gulf Coast today with uh, not too heavy on those rainfall amounts, but uh, Klawak with this system picked up four tenths of an inch today and Sitka had three or two thirds of an inch of precipitation there. So very wet day here across central and southern southeast coast, uh, maybe a tenth of an inch on up to the north. You can see still low pressure both at the surface and aloft off the coast there. So tonight uh, showers will taper off up to the north but linger uh, throughout all of the night tonight. Uh, periods of rain will continue over the central and southern panhandle. Uh, 
That trough now continues to weaken, especially at the surface, though, but the whole thing slowly moving eastward there. And then uh, eventually this front will kick it on out. But for now, rain will spread up to Kodiak Island. Stay, it'll be a wet night here for Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula, risk of some shower activity over the southern Kenai Peninsula later on. And then evening thunderstorms, uh, maybe as far west as the Chugach, Talkeetna Mountains, back across Copper River Basin, into the 40-mile uh, country, but uh, just showers along the North Gulf Coast. And then isolated showers this evening here, back to the northwest. And this front will begin to weaken considerably, so the wind field won't be as nearly as strong as what it has been with it here for the coast. So don't look for a big increase in the winds there along this, the uh, Yukon Delta coast or the Cuscoan Bay area. Showers, lighter winds for the Pribilof. Showers and pretty gusty winds could just still see gusts 35 to maybe as high as 45 miles an hour over the western Aleutians. But most of the shower activity will be along or north of the Aleutian chain there at the uh, bulk of the moisture here over the western Bering Sea. That's going to move into the Permalofs tomorrow afternoon on Tuesday uh, with a little bit of an increase in the winds back up to 20, maybe gusts 35 miles an hour. That'll be moving into both St. George and St. Paul during the afternoon hours. Otherwise, this front edges its way inland with the precipitation, although it's becoming lighter here and the whole thing weakening. Heaviest amounts will be around Kodiak Island and the uh, Pacific side of the Aleutian Range with some rain up into the uh, Kamishak Bay Area, possibly reaching the uh, southern Kenai Peninsula again along the North Gulf Coast. Increasing chances of moisture there, nothing heavy yet. Scattered showers, Copper River Basin, Susitna, Manuska Valley, and also up there over the northwest part of the uh, state. Fair chance for some thunderstorm activity now from the, uh, actually maybe even the Kobuk, Selawik, up to the Noatak Valley areas. Sunshine, North Slope in the afternoon. Brooks Range, but lingering fog along the Arctic Coast. And another trough uh, keeps it breezy and unsettled out over the western Aleutians. Showers continue there over the southern southeast coast, uh, but beginning to taper off. They're definitely tapering off up to the north with maybe some clearing. And then for Wednesday, that system's off, weakened, washed out, all into Canada. Partly sunny skies coming up, light winds there. And this front really weakening now with a band of rain here from the uh, Gulf of Alaska up to the Prince William Sound area to Cordova and then showers along the front over the inland areas there, and then more rain here approaching the southwest coast with this low pressure center, uh, actually the original one now down up to 998 millibars for the pressure, and a weaker one develops up here with the main frontal boundary there in the northwest. And another trough, not really all that strong, pushes into the uh, far western Bering Sea, bringing a uh, chance of uh, rain or fog and drizzle, definitely IFR, will be pushing in with that IFR flying conditions, and that's about it. Winds won't be that big of a factor at all, nor here with this system here in the eastern Bering Sea. Just looks pretty showery for the Perbloffs and uh, continued cool and unsettled for the eastern Aleutians of the Alaska Peninsula, but improving there for Unalaska and Nikolsky in the afternoon as uh, dry air starts to come in from the west. And a lot of showers, pretty numerous here, even some rain for the western Alaska range on up across uh, maybe the northern Cuscombe Valley, showers again along this weakening front. North Slope dry, but low clouds, fog persisting for the Arctic coast with a very light wind pattern up there now. East maybe 5 to 10 or 15 miles per hour, and roughly that's about it. Again, as I mentioned, the southeast coast drying out pretty nicely from Yakutat all the way down to Dixon Entrance, uh, partly, maybe mostly sunny for at least one day in a row. And on to the lows tonight down that way in the lower to mid 40s there, warmest in the south, 46 for uh, net, for example. South central Alaska, 40s, maybe upper 40s, Manuska, Susitna Valley, or uh, yeah, Susitna Valley, or no, the Manuska Valley, probably a little cooler in the Susitna Valley, especially around the Willow area. Lower 40s here back toward the uh, Ambler area, Galena, with 30s eastward there to as low as 31 at Eagle. Arctic coast, lower to mid-20s, and 30s out to the west. And for the highs tomorrow, uh, mid-40s for the Aleutians, and upper 40s for the Alaska Peninsula, lower 50s there around the King Salmon area. Looks like 55 to 62 or 3. South central Alaska with 50s along the North Gulf Coast. 65 to 72 here over interior Alaska with mid to upper 60s all the way back to the no attack valley there in the western Brooks Range area. So a good warm up going on there. It'll trigger those afternoon thunderstorms and highs in the 
lower 30s in portions of the North Slope and near 30 for the Arctic Coast. Lows following night, no change for the Panhandle in the 40s. 40s here, South Central Alaska in the near 50, lower 40s in the interior, lower 20s up there along the Arctic Coast for the lows now, and uh, 30 to 35 in the Northwest, 35 to 40 for the Southwest, lower 40s for the Alaska Peninsula, and then the highs on Wednesday, 65 to 73, call it that, here over the central interior, 60s again all the way back out to the Northwest, 40s over the Aleutians. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. IFR here along and off the coast from uh, covering Nunavak Island to St. Matthew Island, east of the Perbolofs now by tomorrow morning, on down to the Alaska Peninsula. VFR, Yukon Cusquam Delta, inland areas there, Seward Peninsula, eastward to the border, IFR north of the Brooks Range to the Arctic coast, and IFR here, uh, north Gulf Coast, and into Prince William Sound, as well as pushing up into the Wrangell Mountains, and looks like back to the Talkeetnas, western Alaska Peninsula, and northern southeast coast, and southern Panhandle. For the afternoon, that breaks out to uh, some areas of VFR for the Panhandle, IFR persisting here along the North Gulf Coast of the Kenai Peninsula, eastern Kodiak Island, back around to the uh, Alaska Peninsula here, but mostly marginal out west, and uh, diminishing IFR there, but still hanging in around St. Lawrence Island, and through the afternoon, some IFR persisting on the central north slope. And for the uh, morning on Wednesday, back into the uh, a lot of more low clouds and fog covering back into the north slope Arctic coastal areas, VFR through the central interior, but marginal VFR now up and into the southwest interior, up into the Cuscom Valley, possibly as far north as McGrath and Nikolai, and along the Ala central Alaska Range south side, down along the eastern range to the Aleutian Range, and Kodiak Island, mainly on the eastern shores there, up along the North Gulf Coast and Prince William Sound, back to IFR, northern Panhandle, and in the south, marginal in between, maybe some VFR and IFR pushing into the far western Aleutians. And for the uh, outlook for the afternoon on Wednesday, central and a part of the eastern uh, Beaufort Sea coast here, uh, looks like it's breaking out pretty good as you head farther to the east towards uh, Kaktovik Barter Island. VFR, scattered thunderstorms here up over the northwest, and then the VFR all the way over to the border into Canada, IFR, northern Bering Sea, Next batch here pushing east over the next front into the western Aleutians, uh, getting toward ADAC in the afternoon. And uh, Barren Islands down to uh, possibly, oh, Chiniak Marmot Bay, northward there to the Kenai Peninsula. I've got another zone IFR and marginal VFR up over the Talkeetnas. Coming mostly VFR for the Panhandle with uh, marginal conditions hanging in along the coast. Passes tomorrow, Anatovic and Adigan, both VFR throughout the day. Lake Clark and Merrill, uh, Starting out VFR, become trending toward marginal on the eastern entrance, mostly for Lake Clark, uh, not so much for Merrill, uh, but it's possible in the afternoon there. And then for Rainy, staying VFR all day long. Windy VFR, Isabel VFR, Mentesta, that moisture over there, uh, keeping it marginal at times throughout the day. Tanita, though, VFR. Portage, marginal VFR to start, trending into uh, ceilings visibilities lowering throughout the afternoon, and Chilkoot and White, marginal VFR in the morning, becoming VFR. Freezing level, 6,000 feet here, up over the uh, north central, north part, west part of the state, and then a zone of 4,000 feet here, uh, well, from the Bering Sea and across the southwest coast, Kodiak Island, across the Gulf, and drops down to 2,000 feet over the northern panhandle. And out west, uh, about 4,000 feet for the Aleutians, 8,000 feet, though, that warm wedge pushing eastward, to the Alaska Peninsula. And for icing, uh, pretty widespread area here from St. Lawrence Island, southwest with that uh, front pushing inland. Uh, mostly, it, all, almost uh, isolated, moderate uh, for the most part here, rime icing variety, areas of uh, mixed icing, Prince William Sound and the eastern interior as well as back here toward the northwest, otherwise icing free for the Aleutians. And then the southern southeast coast with those lingering showers, chance of some icing there. Uh, mixed icing. And then for the jet stream, there's that upper level low, keeping the chance of showers in over the southern southeast coast. Another one up here with the eastern interior doing about the same thing. 
A stronger system here with the uh, storminess out in the Bering Sea. Jet well to the south here of the entire forecast area, but 80 knots uh, around uh, the eastern central Aleutian areas. 9,000 feet low in the Gulf, a week low over the eastern interior, so we've got light winds over the panhandle westerlies, 40 to 50 knots with that system out west there. Mostly south or south-southeast here, week low over the eastern interior. Light winds increase to 20 knots along the coast, 40 to 45 along the Aleutians. And for the uh, turbulence, occasional moderate chop out here, below 5,000 feet there for the uh, central eastern Aleutians, central and western Aleutians. Pribilofs uh, could be a little bumpy as well as St. Lawrence Island. And after the break, I will return with the marine forecasts. Hello again, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service with another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. And joining me today are not just one, but two people, both with the last name Stevens, which is even more fun, but no relation. We have Eric Stevens mm -hmm. from Gina mm -hmm. and George Stevens, who is a mechanical engineering student from the University of Alaska mm -hmm. Fairbanks. Did I get that right? Yep. Awesome. And today you guys brought a really cool toy or I should say tool with you. It's a sandbox. But why are you guys working on a sandbox? Well, it's part of our senior design project, and we were approached by um, EPSCOR to build, build this from, for them. Mm -hmm. They uh, uh, had a proof of concept that they developed years, years, about a year ago, I think, and um, the, uh, uh, they, they wanted a more robust ver version that they mm -hmm. could pack onto a plane and take places. And it's a handy learning tool for kids and, all, and adults. So you're a mechanical engineering student. You've built a traveling sandbox for the experimental program to stimulate competitive research, EPSCOR, and Gina's facilitated this. But why do we need a traveling sandbox? Well, the, the uh, prototype was such a big hit that uh, they decided they wanted another one, actually two, that, they could act that would be easier to travel with, you know, um, possibly marketable even. Okay, so this is a traveling sandbox that's got a lot of bits and pieces and, and a computer hooked up to it. What is the computer doing with the sand? The computer actually uses a connect sensor to read the topography of the sand or the shape of the sand, mm -hmm. which, and then the computer translates that into information which it projects using a projector onto the sand showing topographical lines and which is representative of the shape of the sand. Okay, so this is a live mapping tool? Yeah. It's interactive. As you're moving your hands through it, it is actively following and changing the lines to fit what you're doing. That sounds like something I could have in my backyard. Yeah. It'd be a lot of fun. So you guys had to change the design a little bit to make this more Alaska-fied, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, how'd you do that? Well, um, the original was made out of basically lumber and Simpson strong tie type mm -hmm. stuff. And we re rebuilt it to make it lighter and basic and basically more transportable we can pack it down to a fairly small size and it can be loaded onto a plane and flown anywhere in the state which you guys did today and you yep. have plans to take this in other places of alaska right yep we're actually going to be headed down to homer with it later today okay very good eric mm -hmm. how does this fit into uh science learning around alaska well you know what i think it is a tool and it is a toy and yes. it brings out a smile from an eight-year-old oh, yeah. and the smile from a 48-year-old oh, with yeah. that inner eight-year-old yes. wanting to get out. The, uh, the sandbox, it's an interactive learning tool that teaches us how topography in the three dimensions is related to, say, a two-dimensional mm -hmm. map. More about that later. Just like George was saying, it's got a connect sensor, not just for video games anymore. It can sense out the, the lay of the land there, yeah. feeds that information in the computer. The computer identifies that, sends a signal to a, pro a projector to send topographic land lines to map over that that uh, lumpy ground so right. you get a three-dimensional topo map out of it and my favorite thing about it this is the thing that stops people at the the trade show they stop at your booth and, and sure. don't leave is that you run your hand through that sandbox and it responds in in real time it remaps yeah, cool. the, top, the topography as you get to be Mr. Tectonic Plate Drifter <laughs> there. You can make things how you want. Well, what if we made a really high mountain here and a low valley there, and the lines adjust to what you did? It's a learning tool because it, yeah. it shows you that connection between these two-dimensional topo lines and, and what's really out in Alaska. And Alaska's a place with all kinds of topography. Mm -hmm. You know, we're from the Great Plains. 
where your topo maps tend to be just like blank pieces of paper. But Alaska is particularly gifted in this regard, and, and this tool helps us, I think, learn more about our state, really. Absolutely. And so this is going to enha enhance uh, STEM, learning the science, technology, engineering, and math in, in many different uh, locations around Alaska. And this would be something that kids and teachers can get their hands on. Mm -hmm. It sure is. And I mentioned the, uh, it's, it's like flypaper at a booth <laughs> that, or, or at the uh, science potpourri. When we had Greg's original version of this sandbox, okay. and that one was made out of scraps of wood, and it, it was a prototype. But even that one, before it had some of the refinements that, that George and crew have made for this newer, right. um, upscaled, maybe a 2.0 version of the sandbox, okay. even that one was so attractive to people. It just demonstrated that this, this has potential to be a learning tool, an outreach tool, an education tool um, that can now is portable and can go places in Alaska. Um, of course, there's only one sandbox, can't be everywhere at once, but hopefully it gets out there, gets the word out about EPSCOR and, and what science is being done here for Alaskans. All right, that sounds really interesting, and I can't wait to get my hands in the sand and try this out for myself. Mm -hmm. We're going to demonstrate this here mm -hmm. in our next segment of Alaska Weather Facts, but before we go, we want to remind you that EPSCOR, which is a, a new acronym for me now, but I'm going to remember this because you can follow them on Facebook and Twitter, and I invite you to do that. Alaska EPSCOR uh, is also uh, something that facilitates science learning at uh, the University of Alaska around the state, and that stands for Experimental Program to Stimulate Competitive Research. So check that out, and make sure you tune in tomorrow because we're going to have the next version where we actually get our hands in the sand and check out how this works and demonstrates that topography. So for now, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with this edition of Alaska Weather Facts and we'll see you again next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at today's uh, sea ice analysis, uh, winds will become more southeasterly over the next few days, so start to look for ice to begin to move off to the northwest and also uh, start to see some ice breaking off the coastal ice that's facing northwest. On to the marine forecast here, coastal uh, west-northwest, 15 to as high as 20 knots on the south coast tomorrow with 8-foot seas. Seas diminish along with the winds as you head north here, becoming westerly at 5 with 5-foot five seas. Lynn Canal, south 20, seas 4 feet. Light winds, slight seas for Stevens Passage, and south winds at 20 for Clarence Strait. Those become northwest at 10 uh, for uh, Clarence Strait. Most of the uh, central and uh, southern inside waters, and then more variable to southerly there for Lynn Canal and Glacier Bay. Light winds out here along the southeast coast now, just five knots out of the northwest, five to 10 knots, and then north-northwest at 10, seas five feet on down to the south. Prince William Sound, light southeast winds at 10, and variable at 10 here for the North Gulf Coast, southeast 20 for the Barrens, and southeast coming up to 25 knots for Kamishak Bay, with seas building to 7 feet, otherwise Cook Inlet, looking at 15 knot winds from the uh, south and southwest. And then for Wednesday, becoming east at about 10 here for all of Cook Inlet, pretty light though, seas slight 1 to 2 feet. East 15, Kamishak Bay, same thing for the Barrens, as well as the western North Gulf Coast. And then for Prince William Sound and the eastern North Gulf Coast, uh, east winds at 10 with uh, 2 to 6 foot seas. And Kodiak Island, 15 knot winds in store for tomorrow out of the east for Shilakoff Strait and southeast along the eastern zones. South 20, southwest of Sitkanak, Alaska Peninsula, southwest winds 20 knots. Seas as high as 11 feet here on the south side. Southeast 20 for Bristol Bay with three foot seas. And then for the uh, day on Wednesday, very light winds now along the east side of Kodiak, 10 knots, northeast 15. That'll probably be an afternoon wind there for Shelikoff Strait or, or a mid morning wind. Anyway, northeast 15, northeast 10, southwest to Sitkana, pretty light and actually becoming variable. Southwest 15 to become south 20 on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula, south 15 for Bristol Bay. And for the western Aleutians, west southwesterly is at 30 knots. Seas 13 to 15 feet out there, and uh, let's see, Adak Atka zone, southwest 25 to 30, with those seas 11 to 14 feet, and then 20 to 30 knot winds here for the eastern Aleutians, and that'll be out of the southwest, and those seas will be running over from 9 to 13 feet. Outlook for Wednesday, lighter winds, uh, less sea heights, lower sea heights, west southwest to 20 there for the eastern Aleutians, with seas down to 7 to 10 feet, west to 20, 9 foot seas now for Adak and Atka, 
And then southwest, uh, coming up to 25 knots, there's that next trough begins to swing in toward the far western Aleutians. Southwest coast, south of Nunavak Island, small craft advisory, south winds 25, sea 6 feet, southeast 25, so small craft advisory is on the north side of the island as well. And winds coming up to 25 knots through St. Lawrence Island. Small crafts also for St. Matthew Island. Those seas building as high as 10 feet. Perbolof, south 30, almost a gale, but not quite. Seas building to 13 feet. And those 15 knot winds tomorrow, Norton Sound will become south 15 for the uh, day on Wednesday. Southeast coming down to 20 for St. Lawrence Island. Southerlies, 25 knots, southwest coast, good for small craft advisors with 9 foot seas. Southwest 25 and 13 foot seas for the Perbolofs, south at 20 for St. Matthew Island. Eastern and central and uh, Beaufort Sea coast here, east at 15, west side east at 15. Those seas there where it's open, uh, four feet. And then from uh, Cape Beaufort all the way down to Wales, east winds 10 knots, seas two feet. Those will become south at 10 there in those same zones on Wednesday, staying light. And those easterly winds will continue at 15 there for the uh, Arctic coast, up the uh, far eastern zone, east at 20. And then for tonight, again, uh, not too bad over much interior Alaska. Uh, the widespread thunderstorm, or well, the uh, thunderstorms of the Copper River Basin uh, will tend to move south and southwest a little bit, maybe the uh, Talkeetnas and Wrangell Mountains areas, or I'm sorry, the, yeah, the uh, Talkeetnas and Chugach Range possibly, and then dissipate and showers continue with areas of rain on the southern panhandle. Rain spreads into Kodiak Island. Rain across Bristol Bay and the southwest coast, but not much of an increase in the winds. That front will continue to push eastward and begin to weaken uh, considerably, especially late Tuesday. Band of rain with it south from the Yukon Delta, Kodiak Island. Clouds rain begin to increase north Gulf Coast, especially the west side staying fair over the interior and looks pretty good over the panhandle on Wednesday. <laughs> These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>